the time to join us in this discussion. In designing this and other webinars throughout the year, the Firki team is hoping that we can disseminate meaningful knowledge and skill that takes us closer to our goal of improving the quality of education in Indian classrooms. This webinar aims to understand the Tamil Nadu Open University Certified Professional Development Practice Program for Teachers and Educators. There will also be a live demo of Kenjin, a digital content platform. And we will also be exploring Tara, which is a voice-based teaching using AI as a virtual teacher. Now, let me introduce the speaker for the day. Gauri Mahesh co-founded Learning Matters with a vision to make education scalable, sustainable, and impactful. She manages business operations, technology, sales, and marketing, product strategy, and customer engagement. Before co-founding Learning Matters, she held various senior management positions in edtech organizations, with the last one being Deputy General Manager at Pearson India. She holds a postgraduate degree in information technology and a certification in management from IIM Kozikode. Gauri is passionate about bringing technology into education in meaningful ways. That brings us to the norms for the webinars for today. You can use the raise hands feature as I mentioned earlier. If you have any question or if anyone wants to answer a question, you can use the raise hands feature. You can also type your questions in the Q&A box. The presenters will try and address as many questions as possible. Uh, do remember that learning new things is often difficult, but challenge yourself and reflect on your thinking and experiences today. The best way to remember something is to write it down and discuss your learning with your friends and other peers later. The webinar will be recorded and will be available on YouTube and Firki soon. This brings me to the end of my introduction. Thank you and hope you have a very interesting evening. Gauri, uh, over to you now. Thank you so much, Anu. That was a very generous introduction. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces here. Um, hi, Ashwat. Uh, uh, thank you so much for having Learning Matters, having us on the uh, webinar today. Uh, it's indeed a great pleasure to be uh, showcasing what Learning Matters does in the space of education with technology to all of you. Uh, a big thank you to all the participants of the webinar today for taking your time out uh, to get, get to know what we're doing with technology in this space. Um, so uh, Anu, would you want me to share the presentation from my screen? Um, Let me just confirm that. Yes, Gauri, you go ahead and start. I can do that. Okay, sure. Okay. Um, so very quickly, a recap on what we're going to do today. We're just going to explore a few new age online education tools. Um, typically what we're doing uh, in the current um, COVID and maybe pre and post COVID, if there is a post COVID state. So um, this is the broad agenda uh, of what we plan today. Um, we, I'll give you a quick insight into uh, who is learning matters about us essentially about this webinar and a quick peek into the interventions that we have at schools. Uh, we're going to touch on three main uh, interventions. Um, and of course, what can you do with this information at the end? Um, I understand that there's going to be a Q&A round, so please do feel free to post your questions um, as and when you would want us to answer. Um, as Anu in introduced me, I, uh, I'm happy, I'm lucky to be a co-founder of Learning Matters. Um, uh, Learning Matters was founded in 2016 with a vision to make education scalable, sustainable, and impactful. Uh, we are three founders in the organization, um, Murti, Saraswati, and I, and uh, uh, we, are, uh, we are friends with uh, a complete uh, sync in our uh, philosophy with respect to education. And uh, that's what has helped us uh, get out of our comfort zone of the corporate life and start uh, learning matters. 
Um, and we work very specifically with schools in the underserved areas. So I would, uh, we can expand this to schools specifically in the tier two, tier three, and if there are tier four, five, six kind of uh, geographies, we don't shy away from going to any of these schools. Uh, so for a quick statistics here, there are about 15 lakh schools in India. And um, even if I would say, uh, if we assume that even 1% of these schools have access to um, you know, fantastic technology or tools for uh, teaching and learning, I think that itself is a very, very big figure. So there's a huge population of schools which do not have access to um, quality education uh, or tools or the teachers in these schools do not have access to these kinds of methods and uh, approaches for, for bringing in the best uh, their students. So this is the segment uh, that uh, we decided to work for. And today we are, uh, we're proud to say that we have a very, very strong team of like-minded educationists and uh, people uh, who want to work in this specific segment. Uh, all of us are extremely passionate about using technology and making sure that technology can be used effectively in the classrooms. We work with teachers and students um, and it's like a parallel uh, work. I mean, we, we are working towards improving student learning outcomes, but then we know that the, the most important uh, part of that equation is the teachers. Um, so uh, with, with the new NEP also coming in force uh, and uh, we see that there is a lot of emphasis that's being laid out on teacher competency building. Uh, we think that's the one big or best way to improve student learning outcomes in all the schools. So we work with a lot with teachers and students. Um, so far, we've uh, reached about 110 institutions, uh, more than 20, 25,000 students and impacted more than 22,000 teachers. Uh, about 1,000 of them uh, were part of our programs in the last one, one and a half months. Uh, so that's, that shows the kind of interest and the um, and and a, and a very big urge to upskill themselves, in, especially in the current times. And most of our teachers have been from the tier two, tier uh, three locations. So we are very, very happy to be uh, associated with all of them. Um, and a quick insight into a little more credential so that you know who you who is actually presenting this webinar for you. Um, uh, so we. Uh, Oh, we got an award from the Capgemini and IMB NSR cell, uh, which will allow us to work with a lot more schools, especially in the government uh, schools uh, here in India. Uh, we are also working with the UK government, where uh, the UK government has a lot of funds as part of the UK India Tech Hub initiative, with which they, would they are looking at deploying tech products in schools uh, in India. Um, and of course, the biggest point that you're going to talk to all of you about today is the Tamil Nadu Open University uh, link. And um, uh, yes, we are in the National Startup, Startup Awards of 2020. Um, we're just waiting to hear the final results of that. Yes. Um, very quickly, what will we do? Uh, we just have a two-point agenda today, very simple. We're going to look at how we can leverage technology for education and how is it that we're building teacher competency? So you will get more information about both these points uh, in the next 20 minutes. So these are the interventions that we do at schools uh, or even for teachers. So we have uh, an MOU with uh, Tamil Nadu Open University and we offer two courses as part of this uh, MOU. Um, the first course is a one month three credit course, which is innovative teaching and skills for online classroom. And the other one is a four month, nine credit course, which is certificate in teaching skills for online and offline classrooms. Um, these programs are, um, they have uh, the student learning materials uh, that are delivered in the online format to all these students, uh, the learners and uh, the contact programs are offered through webinars uh, because that's, that seems to be the order of the day now. Uh, and the certification is also something uh, that is given by TNOU. Uh, so the assessment is done by TNOU uh, and uh, the program is completely delivered by Learning Matters. So you can, uh, I will, when I get to the uh, subsequent slides, I will let you know what you can do, how you can be part of this program. Uh, but if there are any questions on this, you can feel free to uh, ping me on this. Um, 
here is our digital content platform. It's called Kenjin. So uh, before I show you the Kenjin platform, I would like to take about 30 seconds to explain uh, why we've done uh, a platform like this and what is the specific or speciality of Kenjin. Uh, most of you would have used online uh, content platforms, which are digitized versions of the textbook. Um, uh, this kind of leaves a kind of zero creativity uh, for the teacher. Uh, you're only showing a digital content of the a digital version of the textbook. Um, so we know that uh, teachers definitely want something more, nothing more than that's there in the textbook. And that's how we created Kenjin. And the the video content, the, uh, the audio visual content on the Kenjin platform is uh, a lot of curated uh, uh, sources, curated content from various sources, reliable sources on the internet. As teachers, most of you would have used uh, a lot of videos um, in your classrooms. So maybe uh, you, if you just Google for any specific uh, concept, you will get uh, a whole lot of videos uh, available for you but then there is a there is so much of time that you need to curate that content to make sure that that is age appropriate that uh, is appropriate enough to be shown in the classroom and it is conveying whatever is within the scope of the syllabus so um, we decided to put this uh, this entire task uh, together with uh, with about 100 to 120 teachers uh, at learning matters uh, and we created this platform. We've tagged content uh, as per uh, various topics. Um, so I I'm going to do a quick um, um, show of Kenjin for you. Um, Anu, if you are able to just tell me that you can uh, view Kenjin uh, right now on my platform here. Uh, yes, Gauri. Yes, yes, yes. We can. Thank you. So I have already logged into Kenjin. So to log into Kenjin, all that you have to do is uh, type kenjin.xyz. This is a subscription-based platform, yes. But once you subscribe to this, you get uh, access to our platform. And the videos are all tagged to grades uh, and subjects that you can see on the left side. So uh, what happens here, uh, we have uh, the login that I have used currently shows you CBSE, but then we also know that you need content tag to your specific syllabus. So we have uh, the other state syllabus also aligned uh, in, with, in Kenjin. So when I click on any one of these uh, subjects, you will see the topics being listed on the uh, right side. And when you click on any one of the topics, you will see a lot of videos that are curated and tagged to that specific topic. Uh, and yes, this platform does need internet because you are playing videos directly from the internet platform. And uh, there are um, videos, uh, videos also have a lot of uh, audio content, audio translation in regional languages as well. So, uh, well, unfortunately, this is taking time. So I'm just going to come back to this video, uh, to this uh, presentation on, on this slide as soon as this uh, site comes up. The um, the biggest advantage uh, that uh, we see with Kenjin uh, as a platform uh, is in uh, where we guide teachers to use the content effectively in the classroom. So if I have a video that, um, let's say uh, there's a video about volcanoes and I'm playing that in my classroom, uh, there are multiple ways in which I can use that video. So I could probably play that video in the classroom at the uh, end of the session uh, and ask the children to view the video and maybe, you know, just uh, just view the video and enjoy uh, the concept. Or I could use it in the beginning before I introduce the concept to the students. So I, this is the usual typical way in which the teachers would use uh, video content in the classroom. But if I have to make this a little more interesting and interactive with just a video which is going, uh, let's say it's a two minute or a three minute video, which is which is just playing on the screen, then what do I do? I can start off, let's say, with uh, asking the students to form a, a mind map based on the video. So I can I'll play the video. I'll ask the students to note down various keywords as they see the video. They can write keywords based on what they hear. They can write down keywords based on what they are seeing on the screen um, or whatever, or whatever comes to their mind when they're watching the video. They write down the keywords. And then as a teacher, I start putting all those keywords together to form an entire mind map on the concept of volcanoes. Now, when we do this, we are using an audiovisual content in the classroom 
we are also making sure that this kind of a content is used actively and not in uh, in a very passive way in in the entire teaching learning process so i'm just going to go back and check if my kenjin uh, yes so my uh, if toc has uh, been painted here so when i click on any one of these uh, topics then i will be able to see the uh, content coming up so for a, i might i'll just try to switch my video off uh, for a second so that the bandwidth is saved uh, a little bit okay so it looks like um this guy is going to take longer uh, okay go back and we'll see how we'll come back to kenjin don't worry about it it's a question of uh, uh, me trying to uh, use my uh, my i'm running it on my phone hotspot so it's a little slow with uh, the zoom uh, video also happening um, so we will see how we can uh, get to the kenjin uh, uh, videos very soon okay so now the next one is on tara okay so i'm go i'm going to show you um a few things before i take you on to the video on tara so tara is a uh, is a virtual voice teacher so um if you've used alexa so i'm i'm just going to show you a device here this is a echo dot device this is a device that it's as it's just as because this with a power cord here so the um this device has there are two variants of this device this one with a battery backup and this one is the one which has only a power source now uh, if those of you are familiar with alexa alexa is an office assistant so uh, when you you can talk to this device and say um you can talk to alexa and say alexa and ask a lot of questions to alexa and alexa will respond based on uh, whether he or she know i mean whether alexa knows the answer to the question so if you say alexa uh, what is the weather like today then alexa is going to respond to you about the temperature outside the humidity and uh, and of course based on the location which you have configured if you ask alexa what is the capital of india alexa is going to tell you new delhi and possibly one or two facts about new delhi So similarly so you keep asking questions to alexa and alexa responds so we've used the same technology the same voice technology but then change the entire paradigm here we have moved uh, we've got alexa uh, we've got a uh, teacher called tara inside alexa and tara now asks you the question asks the learner questions the learner will respond and the and tara will evaluate the responses of the learner so i'm going to play a video now here uh, for you to see how tara uh, interacts with the learners and uh, i'm also going to show you how tara can be accessed on on a smartphone instead of a device so this is a device which we place in the school uh, so one device can 30 students can use one device so they will have to take turns to talk to tara and they do it one one by one but in the current situation where schools are shut and we do not have uh, enough uh, uh, i mean this students do not have an opportunity to come to the school to use uh, the eco device uh, we have uh, come up with a solution of using the same alexa um, uh, application on the phone so uh, very quickly i will show you that as well so when you open your uh, phone this is this will work on any android or uh, ios phone it does not really uh, um, uh, matter but then if you look at um, this is a alexa uh, app on my phone and i'm just going to um, call ask alexa a question here okay alexa what is the weather like today alexa how are you so far so good and how are you today uh i am not sure if you're all able to hear i'm just going to try once more alexa how are you today I'm happy to be talking to you. How are you doing? So that's that's how you interact with Alexa directly. But now I'm going to show you how 
you can use tara with the same device so tara when we do tara we tara program comes with a book so there is a book that uh, we give to all the learners and the the learner will follow along with the book so i will just show you a quick um, uh, snapshot of this so i click here and i say alexa open tara 1123 Welcome to Tara. I will help you with today's lesson. Before starting, what is your login name? My login name is Lion. Welcome Lion. In this lesson, we will learn the names of various household objects and appliances. So, if you see a uh, i just did a quick demo in the interest of time so this goes on there is a there is a place where alexa i mean tara will ask questions and the learner will respond i will show that to you on the video so that you will be able to see that as well meet tara our cloud based nlp powered virtual voice teacher my name is somya hey that's a beautiful name How old are you? I am eight years old. Yes, sir. Now you can ask me. A green pen. Yes. Yeah, yeah. See the green. A green pen. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Now look at pictures A, B, and C. I will give you one minute to fill in the blanks. Read out the full sentence in picture B. This is Sundar Kar. Well, that is not quite correct. You should say Sundar's. This is Sundar's car. Read out the full sentence in picture C. This is Nina's house. That is not quite correct. You should say Nina's. This is Nina's house. We are learning. So, if you see, that was how um, Tara interacts with the learners. Uh, And so what essentially we've done is to make sure that there is a help for the learner in the classroom uh, and over here the by learner i mean it could be an adult learner or it can even be a student in the classroom uh, so when when we use a, when tara is used by the students in the classroom the teacher supports the entire intervention by being there as a facilitator and is also able to guide the students and allow them to repeat the same lesson any number of times till they are confident about a specific concept currently tara teaches english in the classroom so uh, the the level of uh, english is um, mapped to the common european framework of references for languages so this is a more a spoken english program that we have designed with tara and but then we are also um, moving ahead and uh, making tara teach science and social studies to teach to students in the classroom so this kind of helps teachers with a lot of remediation uh, activities in the classroom so she is able to focus a lot on students who need more attention and students who need more help with respect to the concepts so that's on tara and uh, to we discussed three parts here we discussed the tnou uh, programs we discussed uh, kenjin uh, and we discussed tara so these are the three products that i wanted to showcase uh, for all to all of you today so what can what's in it for you what is it that you can do um, so yes you can definitely register for the tnou programs and uh, get certified uh, by uh, the tamil nadu open university um, you can uh, you can write to us i will just show you, uh, display the uh, contact coordinates um, you can write to us and we will be able to help you in registering for these programs um, and uh, the program uh, the delivery of these programs are being done by experts in the industry who have spent more than about two or three decades in the teaching uh, line and they are very comfortable with tech using technology for education so that's the kind of uh, teacher profile that you will get for these tnou courses you could also subscribe to kenjin um, in fact uh, we are discussing a, a special um, uh, a special way of subscription for all the tfi fellows for kenjin you could use it uh, you could subscribe to the platform and use the platform in your own classroom 
you can add your own videos to the platform uh, you could add videos that are there on the uh, public uh, domain or you can uh, record your own video and also uh, put it up on kenjin and share it with your students uh, so if you um, take uh, if you subscribe to kenjin uh, only for your for yourself then you will be able to use it in the classroom if you subscribe for it uh, for yourself and your students you will be able to share videos with your students as well tara again can be done for your students so you can do it for a class of specific students so you can do it only for your uh, six standard uh, a section students and you could probably get all of them on tara uh, and uh, all all the students will get a textbook and they will also get access to the uh, program using the device and as i showed you the current uh, tara program can also be used on the mobile phones as long as it's a smartphone and they are able to download the alexa app so uh, that brings me uh, to the uh, to the end of my presentation and i would like to invite questions um, or uh, any observations from any one of you on whatever i have discussed so far so we have a few questions in the q and a section let's yes. we can start with those sure um uh, i can see a question around the does the kenjin has public domain best videos or produced by learning matters so basically other yeah yeah it, it it has both so um if you if you look at the um there are enough and more videos that are out there in the public domain which can be uh, which can be used in the classroom if they are curated so that work is what we have done in terms of the public domain videos but then over and above that we real we knew that there we are not going to have video content for all the concepts definitely not but then there is a whole chunk of simulations and a whole lot of videos on the lsrw uh, aspects of language learning so those videos are developed designed and developed by learning matters and videos and simulations um and apart from that the audio summaries that are there on kenjin are also from uh, learning matters uh another question is around the languages that the program is available in uh, uh so someone's asked that is it applicable for any other language other than english um so i'm assuming this question is for tara um and uh, see uh, tara is currently delivered uh, or it it teaches english with english as a target language so that's an immersion technique that we have used but then tara can also teach english with the help of hindi as a target language so we have both programs we have developed it um, where tara tara speaks to you in hindi and explains a specific english concept so uh, it says something like mai aaj aapko ye sikhane ja rahi hu so it can talk to you in hindi and expect you to respond in english and correct your english statements and like i said uh, there are uh, we are already moving towards uh, providing science and uh, humanities uh, on tara very soon possibly in the next 3 months another question is just around the grades that are covered so someone's asked are all grades covered and then someone's asked um is it uh, is kenjin available for 11th and 12th cbse so we could answer both of these questions. okay so uh the second question is very easy because it's not available kenjin is not available for 11th and 12th because uh, we do understand that the schools are um very selective about what they want to do in the 11th and 12th standard for students so um we do not have 11th and 12th however since the platform allows teachers to add their own content they can always add content for the grades of i mean 11th and 12th as well so some of the schools have done that where they um, where they wanted to uh, focus a lot on the entrance exam coaching so they have done a whole lot of uh, videos and put it up on kenjin for the students um for the uh, for uh, tara Uh, or first on Kenjin, all other grades are available. So if we start from grade one to all the way up to uh, uh, grade ten, 
Um, and on Tara, as I said, this is completely based on the common European framework of references for languages. So if you knew any language, let's say um, uh, Tamil is my mother tongue. So I can say that I am at a proficiency of C2 in Tamil, which is the highest level of proficiency. Uh, but then I can say I am at a level of uh, A1 in, um, in maybe Canada or I can say I'm at A2 Canada. When I say A1, it essentially means I'm at a beginner level, a basic user who is able to engage in uh, informal everyday conversations. So the kind of co content that we have built on Tara is to make sure that the content, the curriculum aligned with these levels. So it's not necessary that a class eight student should always be at a C2 level, which is not the case. In most of the schools that we see, uh, a class five student or a class eight student is not able to read a class two uh, textbook. That's the biggest problem that we're all trying to solve, right? I mean, age appropriateness is something, or I would say, um, age level uh, proficiency is what we're all trying to achieve. So from that point of view, we have seen uh, even class eight students being at a level of A0, which is not a CEFR level, it's a bridge level that we have created, essentially trying to read sight words. We're trying to get them to read cat, mat, bat, and then familiarize themselves with the language. So you saw in the video, there were a group of students who were trying to repeat some words when a black cat, a blue pen and all of that. So they first try to understand the sounds without really worrying about the grammar. So that's the course that we've done for Tara in English. Um, a few people have also raised questions around how Kenjin uh, can be implemented in a classroom where technology is not uh, available or, 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 you know, it has uh, less infrastructure in terms of technology. So mm. what can they do? Okay, so um, there are two, I will answer this question in two parts. What can you do in classrooms where there is access to less technology? So if you only have, let's say, uh, you don't have a stand, internet bandwidth, you don't have a constant internet bandwidth, then uh, typically we've seen teachers downloading a lot of YouTube uh, videos um, from uh, and putting it on their pen drive and then using it in the classroom. So this is one, one thing that I have seen teachers do. But um, in the last two months especially, we've seen a sudden surge of uh, uh, internet being available in the schools. Uh, see, uh, especially this COVID time, right? Every school wants to go online. Every school needs to go online. It's just not want. They just need to go online so that they can continue education. It's not about just the course a school fee. It's about a, a student missing out an entire year, academic year, which does cause a lot of problems in their ability to continue with learning. It does form a lot of learning gaps. Uh, so we've seen a lot of schools uh, adopt internet. They have, they have gone out checking, okay, does Geo work in my place or does Airtel work better? Does BSNL work better? There's some connection that works and they've been able to use this. So Kenjin does work on, uh, on a hotspot and typically on any other day it would have worked. But today I think I'm kind of maxing out on my bandwidth with both the Zoom video call and uh, my uh, Kenjin uh, videos. So that's the reason why it's all taking too much time to load. But on a normal day, when I go to schools, even in the rural areas, and I'm, I'm doing a, a session with the, the students on, uh, with Kenjin, it works perfectly fine with my phone hotspot and my ordinary laptop. So sometimes if the quality of internet is very good, the picture quality also is very high. But it's like when you watch a movie, suddenly you will see all, all of it getting pixelated. That's because uh, your bandwidth is going down. So you will suddenly see everything getting pixelated. But then within about five seconds, it will all rest up. So that, that way it works. Tara, on the other hand, because it's, a, it's not a video, it's only a voice text. So it does not require a very high bandwidth. It works, in fact, it works seamlessly fine. My, the phone that I used, the, the Alexa app that I used on the phone is only with a 3G connection. Uh, right now it's showing me only 3G. So it works, it works perfectly fine. So that, I think we should, we should look at how we can bring in internet into the schools. I think that's definitely a point here. Another question is just around uh, whether the uh, material available caters to ICSC board as well. Okay, so uh, yes, it caters to any board. So we've made it board agnostic. Um, so to all the teachers on, on this webinar, uh, I, I have just one uh, comment. I'm sure you will all agree that the concept does not change from board to board. Newton's law is Newton's law. It does not, it's not going to change between CBSE and ICSC or a state board. 
what typically changes is the method of evaluation of a particular concept that is, is definitely different between the boards the type of assessment that happens in each of these boards so when you consider that point any of our videos that are tagged any video that we have tagged on kenjin platform can be used by any teacher on any board it does not it does not uh, restrict them uh, for specific boards <coughs> excuse me uh, someone's mentioned that they're having trouble trying to log in then they're trying to log into kenjin and they were wondering if you could guide them one more time so okay, in. so they need they need to have a user ID and a password, which I will not be able to share directly on the webinar right now. But uh, I will go back and uh, the the presentation has the uh, uh, contact coordinate, so I can definitely you can write to us and we'll be happy to give you a demo login. You should be able to see it. That's not a problem. Okay. So would you Anu? Would you want me to? I can I put the contact slide at the end of the webinar so that it's easy for people to note down. Okay. Yes, yes, we can do that at the end. Another question is just around uh, the finances involved. People okay. wondering if if it's paid for, how much is how expensive can it be? Okay, sure. So yes, uh, it is. Uh, the programs are all paid. Uh, so we we do follow a subscription model. Uh, uh, let me go from uh, the TNOU programs first. So uh, the TNOU programs are priced uh, between 750 rupees per learner to about 2,500 for the longer program. Uh, so the, the longer program is a four month, a four month duration, which can, they can finish with, uh, with an elapsed time of about a year. So uh, that flexibility is given because it's an open university program. And uh, we charge, uh, as I said, between 750 is the, the price for the, uh, the shorter program and 2,500 for the longer program. Uh, for Kenjin, um, Kenjin, it works to about 200 rupees per student per year which is something like 20 rupees a month uh, for the student. Um, and uh, when, uh, when a school subscribes to all, for all the students, the, the teachers also get access to it. So the teachers don't have to, don't pay separately for Kenjin. Uh, similarly for Tara, uh, we charge, uh, for Tara we charge about 800 uh, uh, to 1000 rupees uh, per student per year, depending on the level and the programs that they take. And here again, when the students, and this includes all the device and the book and all of that, except the internet connection, everything is given because internet connection, the school has to take it in their own name. But the device is something that we give to the school for perpetual use. So the device is not necessarily to, it's not only Tara, they can use the device as a normal Alexa device. Uh, and uh, we provide, uh, depending on the number of students, so for every 200 to 250 students, we provide one device, which is what the school will need. It, the school can always buy more devices if they want to. And every student gets a book. Uh, they get two books for every level. So um, the entire level takes about a one academic year when you space it out in the classroom uh, usage. So that's the uh, kind of uh, pricing structure that we have. So the biggest point that we, mm, we always have, I mean, the spirit is that we should make it as affordable as possible. So we're trying to keep it as low as, you know, I mean, 100 rupees a month is, is max that they, they should spend, not more than that, is, is what we feel. Nice. Um, someone's wondering whether the credits obtained from the TNOU uh, you know, are internationally transferable. Okay, so I need to check, get that checked. Uh, I will need to ask the, I can probably get that checked definitely. Yeah. Um, people are also wondering about how they can know about the TNU program in detail. I'm guessing you will share some uh, brochure. Yes, so, um, Yes, we can. So we, we just have to, um, maybe in the next one or one or two weeks, we will be releasing the entire uh, communication on the intake also, because this happens through the TNOU uh, platform. Uh, so I will, um, uh, my colleague Anand is also here on the webinar and uh, Anand is in touch with uh, uh, Prerna and uh, also with uh, uh, Dakshina Murthy. So I, he will be able to give all details about the, um, uh, the registrations as soon as they open up because students will all have to register directly on the TNOU platform and we will be delivering the course uh, from there. 
So that's that's how it will work. We will give you all the details. So with all the links to register and all of that, we'll send it across to you. Um, apart from regular school subjects, does Kenjin cover social emotional learning topics as well? Uh, so can I, I need to understand this question a little better. So if you're saying social, socio-economic, sorry, what did you say? Social, emotional uh, subjects, uh, emotional content. Uh, it's about how the teacher is going to use this video in the classroom. So um, let me just, let me just check if I'm, if my, uh, if Kenjin is, uh, if I'm able to open Kenjin again, so just give me a moment. If I'm able to open it, then I will show you one of the videos and definitely you will, you will be able to understand how you can use the same video in the classroom for various topics. So it's, uh, it's all about how the teacher wants to use an audiovisual content in the classroom. It's not, it's not about, uh, do I have a video for uh, some specific moral values? You could have a video, you could have a Panchatantra tale and you want to put it up on the uh, platform, please do that and use it in your uh, classroom. So there are a lo whole lot of videos on political science. So these are my favorite uh, videos. Um, I'm just trying to see if I can at least have one of them open up. Okay, so I think, yes, I can. Before this, uh, before the web, uh, internet behaves funny. Uh, do you see my uh, screen now? Yeah, okay. So uh, this is a particular um, uh, topic called Women Who Change the World. Uh, so there are multiple videos over here and we're talking about, uh, so I'm just going to click on one of these videos. So here we're talking about women entrepreneurs. So this is a, this is one video where if you see the video is curated. So when I say curated, do you see this particular point? The, the, the video stops here. So right. essentially we know that this is what is the most relevant segment for this particular class and, and the topic. So the, uh, the entire video can be played in the classroom by the teacher. So this is a video that is not animated, right? I don't think I set out to be a powerful woman or uh, uh, actually get any awards, but I just think it, it happens to be a recognition of uh, achieving a place in the sun as a woman in uh, many professions which are otherwise traditionally so if I'm, if I use this particular video in the classroom and I want to, I want to talk about a whole lot of uh, emotional uh, concepts, aspects, I can do that. I can use any of these videos in the classroom. So it's not, it's, it's a Kenjin platform is completely for the teachers. You know, it's, it's without the teachers, the students, will they be able to use Kenjin platform on their own? We wouldn't recommend that. A teacher has to take the students through these videos. And it's not, as I said, it's not a direct uh, digitization of the textbook. And so this is a concept that you're teaching in the classroom. Right. Um, since it's, this has uh, come up, I will very quickly also show you a few um, more features here. Well, I'm sure there were, there were questions around this. So, um, so when you click on any of these uh, buttons, you will see that you will see there is an audio summary and there is an audio summary in English specifically for uh, videos where the accent, the actual uh, original accent of the video is in, um, is actually in American or Australian accent. So we have done a, uh, a neutral accent, uh, English uh, summary. And then there are also summaries available in Tamil and Kannada for now. We are ready to expand this to any number of languages based on the requirement. So if the requirement, if let's say, if, TFI has a large requirement then we don't have a problem in adding Hindi or uh, any other language over here, which makes sense to you as an entire cohort. Yeah. Right. Uh, so th the other feature over here is where you can assign the same uh, video to your students. So you click on the uh, class and the teachers are assigned to classes and sub uh, classes and sections in the back end. And all their students also appear, their list of students appear here. They can choose to assign a specific video to a student. So you can, as a teacher, I, I can go and say, I want to assign this video to my student Meha because she has, she needs to revise this concept better. 
So when Meha logs into Kenjin, she will find this video has been assigned to her very specifically. So if it's, if it's not a video that's already here, you can add your own content. So you say add a video and then you will get an interface to very quickly add a video. Now this video can, is coming from YouTube. So you can record your own video, put it up on YouTube, you create your own channel. But instead of sharing your channel, which may have other videos also, you can share only a specific video from your channel with your students over here. Put down the URL here, choose the grade, subject, chapter, whatever, choose a thumbnail and click on, and you can even uh, create your own start and end time for the video. You may, you may want them to watch only a specific segment of the video. Do that, preview it and upload your video. Once you upload your video, your video will show up in your My Content where you can, you, wherever you add it, you can go and check that video. And you can assign that video also to your students, the same way that you would do any other normal video. So this is, this is very quick. I, I'm thankful that my hotspot worked well now. So, so you're able to see uh, Kenjin working. We still have time. If you want to take us through some more features, we, we okay. can do that. Okay. Uh, are there any specific questions? Then I can probably... Yeah, say. so there was one more question around. Uh, can students at home uh can uh, use the platform but i guess you sort of answered that because you said that teachers need to be present uh, to take students through the content yes the, but then we give access of, uh, to the platform to the students at home so the student will also get a login id and password they will be able to log in and they can and the uh, beauty here is um, that uh, they, they can use it on a mobile phone they can use it on a tablet they can use it on a laptop so i can use the same kenjin on my uh, mobile phone as well. So all I have to do is uh, just say kenjin.xyz and there you go. So, so this, uh, it'll work exactly on the mobile platform also. So there is, it is not an app. You don't have to download anything. It is just a browser which you will use on your phone. So this, this kind of eliminates all the um, issues about storage space. I mean, I, do I need a high-end phone? You don't need a high-end phone. You need a simple smartphone with a browser and with a fairly decent internet connectivity. If your phone can, you can watch any WhatsApp video on your phone, then you can watch Kenjin as well on the phone. Right. So that so is definitely if I'm wrong, uh, Even if the teacher is not present, but assign some work to the student, the student can at home uh, just complete that task. Right? Yes, yes, they can. So see, typically we have this problem with in most of our schools that we work with, they have this problem where uh, smartphones are not accessible to the students at all the time. So most of the schools have gone online. Then the problem here is there is probably only one parent who has the smartphone at home. Right. And there is a problem with the parent goes off to work and the student can't really access any content that the teacher is sending or rather they can't do a live interaction with the teacher. So now what we've done with one particular school on a, on a, I would say on a pilot mode, right? I mean, there are customers since I think about three, four years now, but in the current online um, situation, what we've done, this is a school up north of Mumbai. It's in a place called Dahanu. So what we are doing in that school is seeing if the teachers can, the teachers can anyway record their uh, lessons. So let's say I am the teacher here. I will record my lesson. I can do that using a phone. So I use my smartphone. I switch on my camera and then I can possibly use a white wall or my, my cousin who's a teacher uses a, you know, a blackboard, which is just a, a flex blackboard kind of thing, uses a chalk and she teaches as though she's facing the students. But there is no interruption. Nobody is disturbing her in the classroom. She's doing that and that entire lesson is getting recorded. So it's a five minute recording, assume. Once that recording is done, she's put it up on her YouTube channel. And now all you have to do is go fetch that YouTube video. I will show that again on Kenjin platform since we have the time here. I'm going to show that to you and share my screen. So you're able to see Kenjin uh, as, as a platform here. Yeah. now. I can, I can go ahead and I can, right now I'll search for a, a video here. But assume you know the video, you know the link already, then you can, you will, all you have to do is you go to YouTube, you fetch that link. So you don't have to search necessarily from Kenjin. Uh, let's assume this is a video that you recorded and this is the video. So you play this video, you will get the link here. Writing's not that easy. So I'll just skip add here. This sentence is grammatically correct. Okay. 
So I'm going to use this. I just copied this link here. So assume this is a video that you have on your channel. This is, this is where you're facing the camera. So you come back and you put your video URL here. And then you can, you can go ahead and choose the various, uh, whatever class this is for. You choose all of those uh, subjects. Uh, okay. I'm doing a random one. I should remember this. Third standard EVS. Uh, so I'm just going to call this butterfly. And okay. I will preview the video. So my video is here. Now I can also do a start and end time here. Okay. My video is added. So where, I, where can we do the start and end time? Okay, the start and end time is here. So I will okay. do the URL here again. And for a minute, I will use this. So I'll just do start and end time. So you can say I want the video to start on in the twelfth second and end in let's say I hope this video is that long. So when you say preview video and you play here. You will see that the video doesn't start from the beginning. It starts from somewhere in the middle. So you can choose which you can choose which time slot you want. Suppose you're not happy with this, with this 12 seconds. So you go back and say it's not 12, but it's like 26th second. So now you preview the video. Now you see that it will start from the 26th second. It doesn't start from the beginning. It starts and ends at a specific point that you want as a teacher. So this is what you can do to upload your own content. Okay. And I will, uh, like I showed you how you, the, the same content uh, you can, uh, any, any content that you, you can, uh, you can click on this blue button on any content, wherever you get this, you will get an assignment to a particular class and subject. Mm -hmm. So you click on this and assign it to all the students in that class, or you assign it to specific students in the class, whichever way. I mean, it depends on if it's a remediation video, you want to give some special help to a specific student, record those videos and allow, allow them to definitely you will have a few students in your class who need that extra support. You can always create videos like this and add it to their, uh, their dashboard. So when I uh, log in as a student, I will be able to say the same video. So let me try. I mean, I, I hope I remember my student ID password. So I'm just going to try this. Um, okay. So when I log in as a student, so when I'm, I also get a student ID password. Uh, okay, so I think I forgot the ID password. So I've always logged in as a teacher. So when I log in as a student, I will be able to see the same videos on my dashboard, whatever has been assigned by my teacher, in addition to my grade specific videos. So as a teacher, when I log into Kenjin, I get access to all the videos. So you don't, okay, great, I have this. So if you see, I have my homework, so I can always click on this and say, this is my homework. I can, I can do the homework. I can mark it as done. I can use it any number of times. Uh, I can view it. My teacher can assign it back to me any number of times. Yeah. Is it only for viewing or is there a, a quiz of a quiz or anything after watching the video? Yeah. The quiz is something that the teacher can assign in the classroom. So when the class is going on, the teacher can do that. So I will uh, do the, uh, teacher, when I log in as a teacher, I'll be able to show you how I can do a quiz. Okay, so uh, I'll just take any random topic again. <clears throat> so I click on this, I get a multiple choice question uh, format. So the teacher can run this. It's like a poll, how you would do in a normal uh, video conferencing tool right now, how you use a poll. You can use the same concept here and use a quiz. So you could also use the same questions either in a Google form, mm -hmm. which is all of this is anyway done as part of our online uh, classroom methodology. So you are free to use any of these content in any format that you want in the classroom. We are not specifically saying that you have to open Kenjin and then run this, this quiz. You can take all these questions and use it in any of your platforms. This riddle platform is something that uh, we use to create quizzes. So you, can, you are also allowed to create your own uh, riddle account and create quizzes. It has got nothing to do with learning matters. And you, you, can create, you can also add your own quiz as a PDF and you can add your content. Say, for example, when I add my content, 
I can add a video. I can also add a PDF. I can attach a quiz to a particular video. So my own quiz. So if you want to create any of those, this is essentially a platform for teachers to put all their content in one place. Mm -hmm. And if you want, you can share this with your other co-teachers also in your same school. So we have a concept of uh, somebody called a HOD, the head of the department. So any one teacher can be assigned the role of a HOD and then they can in turn share all their uh, content with other teachers in the same uh, school. If you don't, then all content will remain only in your login. It does not come back to learning matters as well. So whatever content you put in the add, add your own content, it does not come back to learning matters. It's only available in your login. As long as you subscribe to Kenjin, you will be able to access it. Right. You stop subscribing to Kenjin, you, your videos don't go away from the, your YouTube channel. They continue to remain there because we play the video from Kenjin onto your, I mean, we play it through the YouTube channel only. So actually your channel will get more number of views. Right. 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 We've run out of time. Okay. <laughs> Yes. It was really interesting. I myself find the app so interesting. I'm definitely going to check it out after the webinar gets over. Thank uh, you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Corey, for being so generous and, uh, you know, just sharing all this wonderful knowledge with us today. I request you to also quickly share your thoughts on the webinar today. Okay. Um, Thank you. It was very well organized. First, I might I must say this. Um, thanks to Prerna. Um, we had a very beautiful, all the way from the dry run to to the the way you organized this, and um, uh, it was excellent. Thank you so much. And um, on behalf of Learning Matters, the entire team at Learning Matters, uh, thanks to all of you for giving us this opportunity to share what we're doing uh, with schools. Um, we would be more than happy to uh, to help. TFI fellows, uh, the schools that you work with in any manner that you want. Um, and uh, let's see how to take this collaboration a lot uh, to much larger heights. Um, and uh, I'll quickly share the uh, coordinates. Uh, the, um, I forgot to do that. Is that okay now, Anu? Can I do that? Yeah, the contact details. Uh, okay. I'm struggling a little bit with my computer today. No worries. Okay. Okay, I think I'm, I'm going to put that down here. Uh, would you be able to uh, bring up the uh, presentation, Anu, by any chance? I'm uh, not able to locate it right now. Prerna, can we have the presentation on here? Yes, share. Yeah, the last slide has the... Um, right. Yes. So um, I've given the coordinates of Anand, who's my uh, colleague. He's also there on the webinar today. Uh, please feel free to reach out to Anand. Um, you can uh, write to me, uh, gauri.mahesh at learningmatters.xyz. Please feel free. I'm on LinkedIn as well. Uh, do connect with me if you would like to uh, start up a conversation on any of the topics that we discussed today. Would be very happy to talk to any of you. Thank you. Thank you, Gauri. Thank you everyone for attending the webinar. Before you leave, please take a minute to give us feedback on your learning experience. Uh, this will help us grow and improve our resources for you. Also, once you fill the feedback form, you will be receiving the attendance certificate as mentioned, as I mentioned in the beginning of the call. You'll receive it on your registered email ID. So don't forget to fill the feedback form. Um, thank you everyone and have a good evening. Thank you, Anul. Same to you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.